Uh, good morning, everyone. This is the Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022 meeting of the Dunn County Planning Resource and Development Committee. Uh, call the meeting to order. I, uh, uh, looks like all of the committee members are present. Um, so I'll begin with approval of the minutes from the November 8th. November 8th, 2022. I'll make that motion. We have a motion, Mr. President. We have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Any questions, comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Say no. Opposed, say no. Okay, the minutes are approved. Um, do we have any public comments from anyone other than the hearing today? Doesn't look like it. Um, so then our first item is uh, the public hearing of a petition for a zoning map amendment, lot five, CSM 636, Deborah and Brian Sefcik. Uh, so I'll open the hearing, um, just a bit of explanation. So we'll begin by asking staff to provide a summary of the report on the request. Um, and then if anyone uh, would like to make public comment, including the applicant, we'll uh, hear that. And then the committee will ask questions and deliberate. And uh, when we're done with that, we'll close the hearing and probably uh, move to take action on the item at that point. So with that, uh, Angie, you want to... So just a second here, I'd like to be able to share my screen. I had to make a couple edits in my staff report and I want you to be able to see that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we're here today for rezone for Brian and Deborah Sh Shefchik. Um, they are requesting to go from residential two to general commercial. Um, their agent is Ron Jasperson of Auth Consulting. Um, a class two notice was pu published in the Colfax Messenger and the Tribune Press Reporter. And neighbors within 600 feet were properly notified of this request. So just to note, um, I'll go through these edits. There's not a whole lot of them, but they'll be in red. Okay, so the applicants own four adjoining lots, totaling approximately 10 acres of land adjacent to State Highway 25 in the town of Dunn. The parcel in question is currently used for outdoor commercial storage and material storage for MAC contractors. There are no intended improvements or changes in the use proposed on the existing lot. <clears throat> Staff looked into the history of the lot as it seemed kind of odd that all of the surrounding lots were, um, let me just bring that down, joined uh, next door were all uh, general commercial. The lot in question was residential too. Um, after speaking with the town clerk and working with our land information staff, we found that the lot was designated restricted commercial from 2010 to 2014. In 2015, it changed to residential two along with the adoption of the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Um, whether this was done in error, we can't be 100% sure, but it does seem like a possibility. Um, I found a few other properties that were in a similar situation. Um, the use of this property has been consistently commercial and is currently used for commercial. Um, most of it is a gravel base with a driveway. It's a little different then it appears on this aerial photo there, they have expanded this kind of gravel area more. Um, so I've included the principal and principal and accessory uses found in general commercial and residential two zoning districts in the packet. Um, I can answer any questions you might have, but I'm just gonna skip over those since they're not proposing to change the use at this time. Um, so I'll just do a summary of the staff analysis and findings. Oh. <clears throat> 
Uh, the current and proposed use of the parcel as commercial storage is not permitted under the current zoning designation as residential two. However, it is permitted under the proposed zoning designation as general commercial. This use has been in existence for more than a decade and predates the adoption of the existing ordinance. This use was permitted when the parcel was previously zoned at restricted commercial. So this use is considered legally non-conforming for this reason. The applicants could continue to use the property for commercial storage purposes without rezoning, but any expansion or merging of lots would be restricted. Rezoning this parcel would bring the use into greater conformance with the comprehensive zoning ordinance. <clears throat> the parcel is not being used for agricultural residential purposes. Um, adjacent land and land in the neighborhood beyond a quarter of a mile are R3, general commercial, and general ag. The parcels to the east are separated by Highway 25 and are zoned general agriculture. These parcels consist of mostly wooded areas with single family homes. Land to the west is zoned R3, consisting of single family residences as part of the subdivision. And some parcels to the north that are not in this photo here are zoned general commercial. Uh, the comprehensive plan identifies the preferred future land use of this area as residential ag. The current version of the town's preferred land use map also shows this area as residential ag, including the existing commercially zoned property and other areas that are also zoned commercial to the north and to the south. <clears throat> These maps were in the packet there too. And I did take out some language here regarding the applicant's future intentions. Um, I'll let um, Ron speak to that since he's here. Um, all right. So <clears throat> I also had to add in some information down below after we received the um, town board minutes. So I can <laughs> I can read those here. So when this went to the town board, um, Ron Jasperson spoke for Brian Shefchik about the rezone of his property that is currently zoned R2 and wishes to be zoned commercial. His future plans are sub to subdivide the properties and sell some to another company. Um, this was then approved. The Planning Commission also recommended approval. Um, they did mention that there was some woods removed and a retention pond installed in that area. <clears throat> Ron Jasperson spoke on behalf of Brian Shefchik and the end result, again, they would like to subdivide the, the lots. Um, all right, so then just to kind of sum up everything, although the town's preferred land use map doesn't indicate this area as commercial, the town of Dunn and Planning Commission both recommended that this rezone be approved. Additionally, the historical use of this area has been commercial and predates the town's adoption of the county ordinance. Um, it is the responsibility of the town to determine consistency with any town comp plan. It is also understood that the town and plan commission must also adapt and adjust to changing conditions. Therefore, staff are going to rely on the most recent actions regarding this property and can conclude that these recommendations of approval demonstrate consistency with their vision for future development of this subject area. And then I just clarified the findings down here. And this is our staff findings. Um, based on the analysis and findings listed, zoning staff recommend approval of the applicant's request to rezone the subject property from residential to to general commercial. All right, and that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Okay, um, let's maybe, are there any immediate questions of Anne regarding her presentation? Um, this is, with your permission, this is sort of aside from our, our business, but how is it that there's a lot in there that is unzoned in the sea of zoning? So this was an error that we found once he came to our office to kind of, so I think this started, he was looking to subdivide these lots. So he was talking to our survey department and we realized that this one lot was zoned as R2, which we thought was odd. 
And then we also noticed, hey, there's a big hole in the map here that this lot isn't zoned either. So I contacted land information and talked to Rachel over there. And we realized that that unzoned piece is actually just a mapping error. So we corrected that one. Oh, okay. But this one was R2. So it had to go through this process. So that's why we're here for that one. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I was just yep. curious. Just one question. Has there been any kind of uh, conflict between like residential just to the west of that storage area? I looked into kind of our records to see if we had any complaints other than that little flooding issue that the town brought up. I, I don't have any record of complaints or conflict or noise. Mm -hmm. Can you ask something, Ricky? Sure. I'll have to ask you to name an address and then I'll have to raise your hand out to square you in. Go ahead, name and address. Yep, Ron Jasperson, uh, W5261 Pine Street, Durand, Wisconsin. Thank you. Do you swear your testimony to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Ron Jasperson, uh, surveyor for Off Consulting. Um, where this all started was uh, Brian <clears throat> approached me late summer, and he wanted to do some, he wanted to combine some parcels for for future sales. And when we started doing the research on it, we found that there was a multi-zoning in the parcels that he wanted to combine. Well, you cannot have multi-zoning within a single parcel. So that's kind of how this all started. Um, and then approached Ann, you know, Brian approached Ann and I did the application and I guess that's where we're at right now. Um, so basically just started with, he wanted just to combine some parcels. Okay. Uh, any questions, Mr. Jesperson? All right, thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Any other comments by the board or questions? Okay, then I'll close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed. <coughs> um, without objection, would it be okay to uh, move number 9A up to the present point and make a decision on this? Okay, then we'll move to 9A, which is uh, consideration of action on the petition zoning amendment for lot three CSM 636. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make that motion that we approve that. To be in that the, uh, the town board and the planning commission and staff made a recommendation to approve it. So okay. because of that, I'll make that motion that we approve that rezone. Supervisor Bjorka moves approval. Is there a second? Oh, second, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Morehouse seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Both say no. And the motion carries and the rezone is approved. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanksgiving. Good to you. Good work, Ann. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ann. Uh, we have no staff reports today. Um, no items placed on the agenda by the chairperson. And so we have consideration of a land sale plat uh, in Lake Port. Is this Nick or, or uh, Barbara's on? Okay. It's all yours, Barbara. Thank you. Um, so um, the committee um, and the members that were part of the committee in the spring may remember that um, that the, that this issue came up with the Josh Nave property, which is on page 28. Um, the, the primary slide for this is on page 28 of um, the committee packet um, that this came up with the Josh Nave property this um, this spring um, because he noticed that back in 1997, that the county had foreclosed on um, a, um, a a number a, a, a number of, of plats um, in his lot um, that he he believed that he owned, and so um, this um, request is being brought forward by John Rank, who is um, selling his property. And kind of the historical data is that back in 1931, 
the plat of Lakeport was created. And then in 19, uh, and Mr. Carlson did uh, just a tremendous job in, um, in, in kind of laying it out. And that's um, primarily what I rely on our report for. Um, but the plat of Lakeport was created um, back in 1931. And then in 1987, um, thereabouts, there was a certified survey map done and it didn't reference that original plat of Lakeport that um, is on your screen right now. And so the following um, the following page kind of shows um, the, the connection between um, the rank property and um, Mr. Knave's property. And so um, Mr. Rank um, is seeking to sell his property and the title company kind of ran into the same issue that Mr. Nave had discovered in the spring, which is basically that the county inadvertently um, perhaps clouded the title of, of, this, of this property by foreclosing on it in large part because the certified survey map didn't um, reference um, the plat of Lakeport. And so what um, the Corporation Counsel's Office is recommending is that we quit claim deed the um, any interest that the county has in the plat of Lakeport as it relates to lot one of um, of, of the CSM uh, as it uh, of Mr. Rank's CSM, um, which I believe is uh, one four nine two. Um, that any interest that the county has um, be deeded to Mr. Rank, um, and um, basically at at no cost. Mr. Nave, we had um, sold those lots for um, about $500. There was more uh, work from uh, the Corporation Counsel's Office involved in, in that because Mr. Nave hadn't had a CSM done. Mr. Rank does have a CSM done, so we were able to rely completely on, on that. And um, further, um, as the committee may recall, Act 216 did change how the county can structure um, retaining any funds um, collected from um, in rem foreclosed properties. And so um, basically something in the neighborhood of under $50 would have been the tax, um, the taxes owed back in 1997. And so um, the, the office is recommending that we just quit claim deed any interest that um, the county might have to Mr. Rank to basically rectify issues that um, occurred back in 1997. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Um, any questions from the committee? Okay. Um, Would anyone care to make a motion to approve the, I guess the motion would be to agree to quick claim the, the uh, parcels back to the to the current owner, to the parcel owner, is that what you're asking, Barbara? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll move approval so, of Mr. the Morris, quick okay. claim for the uh, rank property. Thank you. I'll second that. Good prayer seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Both say no. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I am going to reach out to um, the, um, the, the landowner um, to the north um, east of Mr. Rank because the same issues apply. Apply from 1997. Um, none of none of those um, lands um, in that government lot six referred to the plat of Lakeport. So I anticipate you'll see this again in 2023. So okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. So uh, we're on to nine B. Post Tanner Lake Real Rehabilitation District discussion. I think we have a couple things here. The application for uh, nomination to the to the board is one. Chase, you want to? Yes, thank you, 
So a couple things here. Um, we'll start out with, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how to navigate to the application process for the initial sure. board of commissioners. So um, that process, um, I worked with our IT department, Krista Vind was very helpful in getting this put together. So on the county's homepage, um, if you scroll down below the meeting calendar and click on news, there will be a link here for seeking application for proposed Lake Tainer Rehabilitation District. And then there's two options here. There is an online form um, that is fillable, a PDF form that then can be um, submitted electronically and it will appear in my inbox and my email and I will compile them um, after the uh, the closing of this, which would be on December 5th. It'll make it in time for the meet next meeting packet for the first meeting in December, and then it'll be for your review at that time. Uh, this is a simple application that we discussed last time with your suggestions, name, address. Um, we included the parcel number to, to verify the location of the property that is, it is within the district boundaries. And then uh, three questions that are narratives relating to the qualifications that an individual may have for that. Um, because it's an electronic form, there's a signature required, an e-signature in order to be submitted. Like I said, that will come into my inbox and I will compile them for, for all of you. The other option is um, this printable application. So an individual could print this, fill it out and mail it in to our office and uh, we will accept them in that fashion as well. This notice, uh, hopefully that comes up for you. There we go. Um, the, the, the notification for this uh, went, uh, went out on our social media for the county social media last week on Thursday. And another reminder is intended to go out again next week, Thursday, uh, to give proper time for, for people to uh, uh, complete it. As of today, we have two applications that have been submitted. Any questions? Uh, a question, uh, this is Mike. Uh, Chase, uh, did the individual that I sent to you uh, do the application? Yes. Thank you. Just a comment. It, it seems like we're uh, getting uh, the horse, not all the barn yet, but the Lake District hasn't been approved, but yet we're nominating or, you know, it seems like it should, first you got Lake District, then you get your commissioners or whoever, but I see the point for timeline, you got to do it, but I just, yeah, so backwards. I guess I can explain that a little bit more in order for the county board to approve the order establishing or denying the Lake District. So in this case, establishing, as was recommended by all of you, uh, that order must include names of the initial board of commissioners. So that's why it came back to this. Yeah, that's why it came back to committee for all of you to consider those nominations. So uh, this process was selected to try to create a little bit more formality in it. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Chase. So on to the next uh, related topic to the to the Lake District proposed Lake District. This is the draft order. I included that in your packet. Uh, we've worked with Corporation Counsel's Office on this, um, and again, this is just a draft at this time, but it, I wanted to provide it to you for your, your review, um, and if there's any suggestions or comments that you may have, we can uh, get that in place so that at the time when we can fill in uh, the initial Board of Commissioners where these uh, vacancies are here in this part of the of the order, as well as the uh, representative of this land conservation committee, um, we would have everything prepared at that time. And then it could be forwarded on to the full county board for their consideration. I'm not sure if you've had a, a chance to, to review the entire order, but I'd be happy to go through it in, in as much detail as you'd like or answer yeah. any questions. Any, any questions or any, any of the sections? I, I do have one. Um, the section regarding the appointment of the count of the, of the uh, county representative uh, it has seemed to me like one of the things we might consider in this would be some kind of a, a de delineating some kind of a process for how that position is filled filled on an ongoing basis. 
So I'm guessing that if we sign this order, that person is selected, but they're not in perpetuity, right? So mm -hmm. it might be, uh, would, it, would it be helpful to say that um, there's, a pro there's some kind of a process that this committee would use to annually select that person or, or, or uh, over a three-year term or, I don't know, Nick, do you have any thoughts about that or Chase? No. Okay. Uh, but I, it's Michael. something. No, I don't, but it, it's, um, Nicole's been handling this and I think it's something that we can, you know, we can figure yeah. out pretty quickly and at the next meeting, report back with some recommendations um, to add language or leave it the same. Sure. Okay. So would that person, Tom, would that person be a uh, county supervisor? My understanding is it could be anyone. Oh, okay. Right. Correct. It could be anyone. Yeah. Uh, so if it was a county supervisor, it'd make more sense to go on a two-year term because that's where election is, you know, every two years. And, and all of the other members of the uh, district board are going to be on th three-year terms, I think. Yeah. So we might want to consider that too. But yeah. I think it would be good to to sort of have make sure we have clarity about how we fill that position. Um, I also think, Mr. Chair, yeah, that the this this representation also is um, potentially viewed as representing the entire county, right. and in, with respects to the Lake District, and not um, necessarily just a perspective from the Lake District boundaries itself. So right. keep that in in consideration. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts? Uh, uh, Supervisor Kinnear. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious uh, when we appoint someone that represents the county board, do they also have to be a, a owner in the Lake District? They do, they do not. Thank you. And um, yeah, because uh, the, the three people we appoint are gonna serve only until the first annual meeting. This fourth, the, the county person would be I think our intention was that would be a continuing position filled as we decide to fill it. So, okay. The wheels of government turn. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Any other questions on this? Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, Chase, just to confirm, have uh, the county lands and the township lands in the district are excluded is that it, everyone is everyone is on has agreed uh, to that? Correct. Um, if you look here on, so beneath the legal right. description here, there is this portion that says accepted from the these district boundaries are all township and county owned parcels. Right. So that would be in this order as right. was recommended. Yep. And each of the townships and the we have agreed that that's appropriate. That is our understanding right now. Yep. Thank you. Surely there's something more we can. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? I would just add that uh, as those applications come in, as I stated before, I will compile them and they will be part of the next committee meeting packet oh. for that December 13th. So um, I guess I'll, I'll take it at your desire as to whether you want to select names at that time or um, we'll be, depending on if we have a, a second meeting in December, which is would be on December 27th. Um, that's your discretion. Um, right. Otherwise, there'd be one more meeting before we need to go to exec and county board in January. In January. So, okay. Yeah. So we can decide at the next meeting how we want to handle that at that meeting or at a future meeting. Okay. All right. Um, gosh, I think we got two minutes left to break the, or break the record. Um, <laughs> are there any announcements? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure the supervisor Anderson has still been chair. We would have had some announcements now that would have. <laughs> Mike, Jim was always good at that. Uh, future meeting, December 13th. Um, with that, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.